Hello everyone, my name is Chin Kai Wong from University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and today I'm excited to share with you our findings on real-world email forwarding security issues and how a new protocol ARC is adopted and performed in the real environment. So what is email spoofing? Email spoofing or email sender spoofing is a prolonged and powerful security threat to the email system. Not only the non-targeted attacks like phishing can use sender spoofing to be more deceptive, but also the targeted attacks can use it to impersonate trusted entities. So how does this all happen? Let me demonstrate. Here we have two email servers, send.com and receive.com. For send.com to deliver an email, it initiates an SMTP conversation. It informs the receiving end the source and destination mailboxes, this mail from and recipient to connect. Email message itself is then transmitted with the data command, which also has a from and to fields indicating who is writing to whom. It all comes to the question, how does receive.com verify the sender? Turns out, there is no way to verify it with SMTP protocol itself, because everything is delivered in plain text and the sender can put in whatever they specify in all the fields here. Thankfully, there is a set of security extensions that provide a way to authenticate the sender. First one, F SPF. SPF works by setting a DNS text record for the domain, which specifies IP addresses or networks that are allowed to send on behalf of that domain. With that, receiver can verify if the 1234 here is the real sending server of send.com. Besides checking the sending IP, there is also DKIM for ensuring integrity and authenticity of the email message. It works by signing a signature of email headers and body with its private key, while the public key is in a DNS text record of the domain. However, DKIM can be hosted on different domains and it may not be the same as a from field. Therefore, in the end, we have DMARC that checks if the domain in the front field is already verified by one of SPF or DKIM. DMARC can be set with different policies in DNS records, so domain owners can suggest whether one receiver should drop or trust the received unauthenticated emails with their domains in the front field. So far, it looks promising when the sender is directly sending to the receiver. So we're here to talk about email forwarding today. Email forwarding is an equally important feature to the directly delivered emails. It empowers mail lists, alias, and relay services for many scenarios. It works just like our previous example, and the only difference is there are additional hops in between the original sender and the final receiver. As we have demonstrated, here the forward.com should be able to authenticate original sender just fine. But what about the final receiver? SPF alone, it will still be a pass. However, this time it's forward.com that pass, not send.com. Therefore, the result from SPF can no longer help with DMARC decision. But we still have DKIM here. DKIM can be verified as the forwarder did not change anything in the email message. With DKIM result, DMARC can conclude that the from is authenticated, real send.com. So, DMARC still works as long as DKIM is still working, but will it? In fact, not all senders sign the DKIM signature upon sending out emails in the first place. And even if they have sent with a signature, it may still be broken by all these common cases. For example, the click to unsubscribe link added to the email body, adding mail list name prior to the original object, or changing the to address to receivers to help it look more reasonable. Some may be worse. They simply strip off the original DKIM and sign their own, and may change the from into mailing list address, making authentication nearly impossible. So are there alternative solutions? How about a new protocol that takes forwarding in consideration? The main issue we've been discussing so far is that email forwarding breaks original authentication records. So is there a way to preserve them for a receiver? We find that ARC, the authenticated received chain, is a security extension that has email forwarding in mind. 
ERC is designed to be a chain that carries authentication results and message signatures generated by all participating forwarders on the route. Therefore, all involved entities from sender to receiver can add their own records as well as review all previous records. ERC is documented in IETF RFC 8617 and is now in experimental stage. If you are interested in how it works in detail, be sure to check it out. So how does ARC work and what does it provide? There are three headers that each forwarder would add into the email message. ARC authentication results, which documents all authentication conclusions of itself. ARC message signature, which works in a similar way to Deakin, signs important email headers and the email body. And finally, the ARC seal, which signs the whole chain, including all ARC headers generated by the forwarder and all previous ones. The three headers together is called one ARC set from one forwarder. With ARC, every forwarder on the chain can review previous results as well as document its own onto the chain. And the chain's integrity is protected by ARC seals signed by each forwarder. So with ARC in mind, here are questions that we are interested in. How many services and senders in general have adopted ARC? How did those who adopted ARC implement it and interpret the information it provides? Moreover, we looked into the new privacy preserved relay services to see if these forwarding services are in any way different from the traditional use cases and if there are new security issues. In the end, we propose configuration for email forwarding services that balance security and delivery rate. Today, we are more focused on experiments against service providers and the privacy rates. The first thing that we look into is the adoption measurements. Traditionally, people study the adoption rate of Deakin by scanning the domain key DNS records. However, this is not possible for ARC at all, as ARC directly reuses the same DKIM key record. We instead tackle this problem with two other ways. One is to analyze datasets provided by industry collaborators. With the dataset we retrieved in 2020, we found over 88% of emails were signed with over 6,000 DKIM keys, while only seven unique keys from Google, Outlook, Zoho, and a few email marketing services were observed in ARC headers. We also tried to register accounts with 13 popular email services to verify if they have ARC implemented, but only half have ARC. So our conclusion is that ARC is not yet widely adopted. However, there are still pioneers, and we were so curious about how ARC would perform in real world, and if it can change anything in addition to the existing security extension sets. So, we designed experiments to spoof with email forwarding that can test ARC as well as all other security extensions. Here's our threat model. The actual sender never sends anything, and the attacker forges sender identity and delivers it to the receiver through its own forwarder, which is modified to always report paths for all SPF, DKIM, DMARC authentication results. Security extension-wise, we iterate it through all possible combinations of ARC, DMARC, DKIM, and SPF configurations that an attacker could set up. We have got IRB approval for our study and all our experiment test cases were sent to our own accounts so that we can examine received headers and how our spoof emails appear in the inboxes. Most importantly, today we are looking for differences between no ARC and attackers for the ARC set. And to our surprise, we do find interesting results that is caused by different ARC configuration, which is for Zoho. While others did not behave differently when forged ARC is added, 
Doho is the only service provider that we found has a significant difference when any DRC is presented in the email message. The result is showing that Zoho treats all emails with ERC set presented as B9 emails, unless DMARC has explicitly rejected. And we believe that is because Zoho misinterpreted what ARC's pass mean, and chains not tempered doesn't mean it can be trusted. Zoho aside, we also find that Outlook is not responsive to all our configurations and not even dropping spoof emails for DMARC set to reject, which is a bit worrying. Gmail is the best one that meets all our expectations. Other than directly spoofing the email services, we also find that the privacy relay services are one of the latest form of email forwarding applications. Starting 2020, the privacy's preserving email forwarding services like Firefox Relay, iCloud Hide My Email starts to pop up and become popular. It's designed for users to sign up services so that their personal email addresses won't be leaked or linked to the registered services. These services have a key difference from the conventional mailboxes. That is, there is no spam folder or places for them to show spoof warnings but can only decide to forward to the user or discard the email. Here's a brief workflow. You bind your personal email address to a randomly assigned alias, and then use the alias to register services. Upon the alias receives any email, for example, verifications or notifications, they will be forwarded back to your personal email address. And users should have the same experience just as it was signed up with your personal email. In order to have a side-by-side -side comparison between spoofing the privacy relay services and spoofing directly a well-protected personal mailbox, we ran all previous experiments against these privacy relays, just as what we did for the email service providers. The attacker forges sender identity and tried to act as a forwarder and send the email towards those relay aliases. This time, the results are truly worrying. Here's what we found. First of all, both iCloud Hide My Email and Firefox Relay choose to rewrite the from field into address from their own domain. This completely disables receiver from automatically checking the authenticity of the original email. And what's more concerning, both services assisted spoofed emails to get more credibility when showing up in Gmail inbox. When previously, the same test cases can only reach the spam folder and trigger warnings. All those made into Gmail were shown up in a regular inbox folder. What's even worse, Firefox Relay even forwards spoofed emails with strict DMARC policy domains, meaning that all .gov and banking services that has DMARC properly configured and still be spoofed. So after all these experiments and measurements, do we think ARC is useful? The answer is yes. It provides a way for receiver to check tamper-proof forwarding records made by each forwarder on the path. However, this is only true when services it to interpret and utilize additional information in the right way. We should always remember that these records are made by forwarders, not the original sender. In addition, it is permitted to modify the message between forwarding hops. So it's probably okay to use ARC for trusting known forwarders, but it should never be trusted by default. As for setting up forwarding services in general, our advice is that forwarders should always try not to make modifications to the message including the existing headers. And it is always recommended to sign your own additional DKIM signature, as well as sealing an ARC set upon forwarding it out. In the end, we would like to mention that all our concerned findings have been reported to related parties accordingly. And so far, we've received replies from Zoho and Firefox Relay team confirming the issues and is working on the mitigations. That's everything I have today. Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much for, for the interesting presentation. Um, certainly on a, a hot topic of, of, of email, which affects everyone. Uh, so are there any questions from the audience? While we're waiting, I have, I wanted to get started. You mentioned uh, as one of the conclusions that you found that ARC is not yet uh, widely used or, or widely deployed. What do you see as the main obstacles to people adopting ARC? Well, uh, first of all, like you have already know that this, this protocol is uh, still in like experimental stage. So yeah, it takes time for everybody to know that there is existence in the first place. Like even for DMARC is relatively new and not a lot of uh, adoption is happening. And secondly, like to uh, deploy ARC, you, you need some implementation. And we found that mm, those open source implementations are more or less uh, working in a funky way, not really completed, or it, it may be buggy in some cases, or it's incompatible sometimes with Gmail or Outlook. So yeah, that could be the case. And it may be better in maybe coming years. I'm seeing more implementations and more fixes in open source projects, but it's not that re uh, that ready for now. So, right. So, so maybe needs some more time to develop. Yeah. yeah. And and maybe a follow up question on that very quickly. So, um, are there any good uh, test suites that people can use to say, have I implemented this correctly, or indeed, would you consider making your work available as a as a test suite that others um, can? Well, my uh, implementation is like partial. I only do the ceiling part, not doing the verification part. In the, and uh, so, yeah, it's a rather simple design. As for uh, maybe reference implementation, you can always try to send and receive to uh, Gmail, just like what I've done with uh, the service providers. And uh, I believe that FastMail have their implementation open source so that is a relatively robust one that i've been tested so yes we have tests with some implementations but we in the end move that into the appendix because it's less interesting or less like uh, ready to be talked with any like reasonable conclusions so yeah we skip that part okay. sounds like opportunities for, for future work yeah, it's uh, future work, and I believe maybe people need to uh, investigating on the implementations more and see if uh, there's more like detailed things that's above our work because we're just analyzing if people are trying to, based on everything is done correctly, uh, but when you're trying to in interpret and utilize that information, you can still be misunderstanding the new protocol. 